Hey guys, welcome. I've got a really fun one today. We're going to use Verlay integration to make some really awesome custom rope physics. No distance joints, rigid bodies, or hinge joints, nothing like that. This is purely based on custom physics. And once you have the core setup done, you can do a lot with just a few tweaks to the code. So this is a lot of fun to play around with once you have it in your toolbox. Ready? Let's go. So Verlay integration is not just specifically for rope or cloth physics, but it is a popular method for doing this because it's moderately simple in theory anyways, and it happens to work well with ropes because it respects momentum. But Verlay integration is just one physics solver we happen to be using to calculate rope physics. One alternative would be Euler integration, which is faster but less physically accurate. Or on the other side, another alternative would be Runga Kuta, I think it's called, RK4 which is slower than Verlay, but it's very highly accurate. So Verlay is a really great middle ground because it's pretty fast and it's pretty accurate. And before we get started, I just want to explain what it is that we're going to be calculating so that it all makes sense to you. Verlay doesn't explicitly track velocity. Imagine a string with a bunch of beads on it. Verlay takes a look at each bead and sees where they were just a moment ago and where they are now. And based on just that data alone, it can then infer where the beads need to go next based on inertia. That's it. So to get a rope going, we're going to create some points, apply gravity to them, use Verlay to calculate where they should move to, and we'll add some constraints since it's a rope and the points need to stay connected by a certain length. So we'll either pull them together if they're too far away from each other or push them apart if they're too close together. Okay, so hopefully that gives you the context of what we're gonna be doing. Now, let's get started. First, I'm going to create a new game object, and I'm going to add a line renderer component to it. A width of 0.15 is gonna be good, and you can add end cap vertices if you want rounded ends, just bring it up to 90. And we'll add a sprite lit material to it, and turn lighting off because this is 2D and that's a waste. And we don't need to do anything else with this component because we're going to control everything with code. So let's create a script called Rope Verlay. And we'll attach it and open it up. So we mentioned a string with beads on it. That's almost literally what we're going to be building here. We've got a bunch of points connected together by a line renderer. So to create our points, let's create a struct called Rope Segment. And in there, we're going to need to know the point's current position and its old position. And just to make initialization easier, we'll add a constructor so that we can just pass in the position straight away. All right, so just some boilerplate stuff. We're gonna set up all the variables we need. Add the system.collections.generic namespace so that we can add a list of the rope segment struct that we just created. This is how we're gonna track all of our points. And we'll need a reference to our line renderer so that we can actually draw it. We'll need to know our start point for the rope so that it doesn't just go haywire when we press play. And to actually create our list of rope segments, we'll need to know how many rope segments we want and how long they should be. We'll need a gravity force, and I like how minus two feels on the Y. And if you want to get fancy, you can add a damping factor to control excessive swinging, but that is optional. And finally, we need to know how many constraint runs we're going to need. And I will explain what this means once we get there. So real quick, let's get our line renderer component and set the number of points inside it, which is going to be based on our number of rope segments. And I don't have an input manager in this project or anything like that, so I'm just going to add the input system namespace up here because our rope start point is just going to follow our mouse. So we need to convert from screen space to world space, passing in our mouse position since it is in fact in screen space when we read the value. And finally, let's create our rope from our rope segments. So make a loop that runs by our number of rope segments that we want and we'll add a new rope segment, passing in the rope start point as the current and old position, which is fine because they'll just update on the very next physics time step. But we'll decrement the Y position by the length of the rope segment so that we actually have our rope at the correct length. So now if you can actually picture it, we have a line of beads or points running vertically downwards. 
Okay, so that's just the data for the string. Now we still need to actually draw the thing and we will do that in update. So we'll create an array of vector threes with the same length as the number of rope segments. And for each rope segment, we'll set the vector three for the current index in our vector three array based on the rope segment's current position. And that obviously makes sense. We're just drawing the line where the current position is. And then we'll just set the positions of the line renderer passing in our vector three array. And that's the drawing part, easy peasy. So next let's actually simulate the physics. And this is actually, again, really easy to do. And again, we're gonna call this in fixed update. So we're gonna iterate over every single rope segment. And let's first get a reference to our current segment that we're on. And we calculate what we expect velocity should be by taking this point's current position minus its old position. And again, optional, but you can multiply this by a damping factor to control really excessive swinging. Okay, so now that that's done, we'll update our old position to be the current position. We'll move our current position by our velocity amount and also by our gravity force multiplied by time dot fixed delta time. And since this is a struct, assigning these values here is only changing the values in our copy from up here. So we actually need to set the struct's data to be what our copy is. Hopefully that makes sense. That's just one of those weird quirks of structs and how they behave differently than classes. It's also one of the reasons that changing a sprite's color or alpha value confused me so much when I was new to Unity and programming because color is a struct. Anyways, that is it for the simulate method. Like I said, it's really not too bad. And next we need to apply our constraints so that the rope segments stay the right distance apart. So first, since in this example, we're just creating a rope that is attached to our mouse, we'll just keep the first point attached to the mouse position like this. Then we're gonna iterate over all of our rope segments minus one, and we're doing minus one because we're gonna be looking one ahead in the index and we don't want an index out of range error. Okay, so we'll create a variable for our current and next segments. And now we'll calculate the distance between those two segments using dot magnitude. And now we wanna check how far off is that distance from our desired segment length. That is going to be our difference. If the difference is greater than zero, then the rope is too stretched out. And if the difference is less than zero, then the rope is too compact. So we'll need to correct those. And to do that, we need to determine the direction that the adjustment needs to happen in by taking the normalized difference from the current position of the current segment minus the position of the next segment. Then we're gonna multiply that direction by the difference. So we have our direction or angle, if you wanna think of it that way, and the exact length of the correction that's needed. So now we actually just apply that correction. So for every single point that is not the first point, we equally split the correction between the two segments that we're comparing, meaning the next segment and the current segment. So we'll subtract the current segment by half of our change vector, and we'll add to the next segment half our change vector, which half of the current, half of the next, which makes up the full correction amount. And now if it is the first segment, then we want that point anchored to the mouse. So this is the only point in the list where we do not equally split the correction. And instead for this one, we just apply the full correction to the next segment. And then we update our list. I is the current segment and I plus one is the next segment, obviously. Okay, so I hope I was able to explain all of that in a way that makes sense to you. But here is the thing about the constraints. Each time we apply a constraint, each segment adjusts based on its neighbor. So changing one affects the next one, which affects the next one, and it continues, and the changes propagate down the chain. So one pass of the constraints is not going to fully resolve or correct the rope points to where they should be. So we have to run the constraints multiple times which is why we set up this number of constraint runs variable up here. You can usually get pretty good stability with the rope with about 20 iterations, though I like how 50 looks best personally. But just keep it in mind, and we'll code this in now too, by the way, 
we're literally running the constraints that many times per physics update. And it's not as computationally expensive as you might think, especially because we're not dealing with all the overhead from Unity's built-in physics components, and you have direct control over accuracy versus performance right here with this variable. Higher means slower, but more accurate. So just play around with it a little bit. I really, really enjoy learning new things and sharing them with you guys in the form of these tutorials. And because of my love of learning, I'm so grateful to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning platform with thousands of classes spanning game development, illustration, graphic design, music, productivity, programming, and so much more. Whether you're just starting out or you're aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone here at every level. Their hands-on learning approach helps you put what you learn into practice right away, and you can share your projects online and get feedback from the class community. Plus, all classes are taught by industry experts and are available on demand so you can learn whenever you can slot it into your schedule. One class that I highly recommend you check out is Visual Effects for Games in Unity, Beginner to Intermediate. You might recognize the teacher from his YouTube channel, and he is an absolute legend at creating visual effects for games. He will teach you all the core concepts you need to know to create stunning visual effects from mesh effects to flipbook animations to shader effects. I've been following his YouTube channel for years and he is a phenomenal teacher. So if you are ready to take your game dev skills to the next level, then check out the link in the description to get started. The first 500 people that use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare just so you can see if it's a good fit for you. Okay, so the basics are done here. Now, if you want interactive ropes that deal with collisions and can have attached game objects that are affected by mass and all sorts of things like that, you are going to have an easier time building a rope out of hinge joints and built-in physics components. Not that you can't do it with this, but it's just gonna be more difficult. And I do have a video here if you are interested in learning how to do it that way. However, I did really wanna make sure that you guys didn't leave without seeing how collisions might be handled with this method here. So I'll add a few more variables up here for that. Okay, and now in fixed update, we need to do this inside the number of constraint runs or we're gonna run into some problems. However, as a bit of an optimization, we can run it every segment interval like this. So for example, with this set to two, it's only gonna run every second constraint run. So now we iterate through every rope segment, except the first one, cause it's attached to the mouse. And we'll get a reference to our current rope segment. We're gonna to wanna to calculate our velocity as well, cause we'll need that at the end. And now we're gonna use overlap circle all to get everything this rope segment may be colliding with. Then for each collider that it finds, we find the closest point on the collider's surface to the rope segment. We're gonna find the distance between that closest point and our rope segment's current position. And then if that distance is less than the collision radius that we set, then that means this segment is overlapping with the collider and we'll wanna correct it by pushing it out. So we'll return our normal or our direction from the collision point to the rope segment. And in the edge case that the direction is vector 2.0, then we'll instead calculate the normal based on the collider's center instead of the closest point. Now we actually resolve the overlap. Again, meaning we push the segment out of the collider. So how much the segment overlapped into the collider, I was gonna call it penetration, but we're just gonna call it depth. Then we're gonna move the current rope segment out of the collider. And as it stands right now, it's going to behave like this weird pendulum thing that kind of oscillates back and forth through the collider. So to get that to settle down, we'll reflect the velocity to calculate a bit of a bounce. However, what's interesting is it doesn't actually look like a bounce when it collides. It acts more like a stickiness variable. The higher the bounce factor, the more slippery the rope seems to be. And the lower the bounce factor, the more it seems to stick to the collider. 
Anyways, finally, we'll update the segment's previous position using the new velocity amount, which ensures it maintains its energy and motion. So that part is crucial. As a special thank you to my patrons, I've made all my little experiments with Verlay integration available on GitHub. I especially like this grapple rope thing. It looks really, really nice with Verlay integration. So if getting access to those source files sounds interesting and you want to support us to keep making content like this, then go grab the project over on Patreon. Thanks so much for watching, guys.